There are a few bigger pop stars in the world right now than Lizzo. Her fans love her, not just for her music, but also for how candid she is. As she says, she's unapologetically a big, black, beautiful woman. But a few days ago, a huge shock when the artist was accused of gross hypocrisy. Three of Lizzo's former backup dancers announced they're suing her, claiming they were body shamed and sexually harassed. A court will likely determine the veracity of the allegations, but just before the controversy blew up, I was given a glimpse behind the scenes of Lizzo's Australian tour. There aren't too many pop stars in the world who, on their way to stage for a sold-out arena show, need to stop to tune their flute. But safe to say there are many things about Lizzo that set her apart from the average performer. And that's why her legion of fans absolutely adores her. Her catchy hits have people singing along around the world. But on this particular night in Sydney, it's bordering on hysteria. They all feel like they know the woman on stage. And Lizzo feeds off it, stopping regularly for chats with the crowd. You look motherfucker. Oh, you got the pants too? You with the pants, the matching pants? You a bad bitch. Sometimes it's hard to know if she's a singer or a comedian. But either way, she's a born entertainer. You're like a force of nature up there. I am, yeah. Unstoppable. I'm proud of it. You know, I used to perform with like a fold-out table and a fold-out chair and a a piece of cloth. And I was like, this is production level, baby. (laughs) This is like, we're Beyonce status. It's like, and now I have this like huge team of people, dancers, flute players, band singers, several wardrobe changes, lights, cameras, action. Like it's, it's really exciting. Oh, look at Melissa trying to be shy. She's trying to be shy. They really were humble beginnings for Melissa Jefferson, born in Detroit and raised in Houston. She studied classical music at university there before quitting, living out of her car for a year and then moving to Minneapolis to try her hand as a hip-hop artist. Years of hard work saw her eventually break through as a mainstream performer. The people struggled to pin down to one particular genre. I think I got that criticism early on just because of the way that I came up wasn't on some industry plant weird shit. It was on like, (laughs) I just really had to work hard and play empty bars and clubs and anyone who would have me. And I am who I am. I've always been that person. You know, I've always been super hardworking and curious and talks too much, talks to strangers, you know, like hyperactive and imaginative. Like I'm still that now. You saying I am who I am. I think that's why people love you. Like you are you. (laughs) Yeah. You you don't pretend to be someone else. Take it or leave it, baby. (laughs) A lot of people are taking it. I hope so, because I'm giving it. (laughs) (laughs) For the last five years, Lizzo has been churning out hit after hit after hit. Her music is unashamedly upbeat. Humour mixed with body positivity. Even Lizzo's backup dancers are called the big girls. I think, you know, when I first started saying I love myself, it was radical and it was necessary because people didn't believe it. People were like, but why would you love yourself? You're fat. And it's like, yeah, that's the point. Like, fat people can love themselves. The Grammy goes to Lizzo. Her message has resonated big time. Four Grammy Awards, even an Emmy Award, after Lizzo made a new TV show called Watch Out for the Big Girls celebrating women of all shapes and sizes. Her acceptance speech for that award gave an insight into what motivates the 36-year-old. When I was a little girl, all I wanted to see was me in the media. Someone fat like me, black like me, beautiful like me. (laughs) If I could go back and tell a little you going to see that person, but bitch is going to have to be you. <laughs> Your Emmy speech was powerful. How much for you was that, that a moment where you realised that you've put people like you centre stage? It was very 
surreal. Now that it's become mainstream and people have, you know, gotten caught up with the message and got the memo, I think now it's like, you don't have to be like, every time a big girl walks in the room, yes, queen, <laughs> yes, good. Like, you don't gotta do all of that. You can just let that big girl exist, yeah. you know, in her body the way she wants to. Like, it's like, don't even draw attention to it. Mind your business, mind your body. This week though, after our interview, Lizzo was hit with a lawsuit from three of her former dancers, alleging both sexual and religious harassment, and perhaps most surprisingly, accusing the singer of body shaming her employees. In court papers, one dancer, Ariana Davis, claimed Lizzo expressed thinly veiled concerns about her weight gain, although never explicitly stated it. What goes into my... Um Termination is that I had felt for a really long time that they were questioning um, my abilities uh, due to weight gain. Lizzo has since released a statement saying usually she chooses not to respond to false allegations, but these are as unbelievable as they sound and too outrageous to not be addressed, adding she would absolutely never criticise or terminate an employee because of their weight. While we knew nothing of the scandal when we spoke with the performer, perhaps one answer she gave provided a clue trouble was brewing in the background. Because even today, like, I was having a rough day. I was sad and stuff earlier today. And, and I still feel like for some odd reason, even if I'm having a bad day or if I'm going through something, people still get good from it. Maybe I'm, like, transmuting it or maybe I'm an alchemist, you know? The news has come as a shock for Lizzo's huge international fan base because the singer celebrates her body constantly, perhaps never more so than by coupling it with one of her other great loves, the flute. Playing that instrument while twerking has now become her unique signature move. I think of when I was at school, like the flute was prim and proper. Mm -hmm. I didn't envisage one day someone would be playing the flute and twerking. Yeah, I know. I remember being young and going to state competitions where the girls didn't really look like me and I would have, or going to flute camp and band camp and I'd have earrings and jewelry on and all the girls are like, why is she all dressed up? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to be that flute player that stands out. After spending some time with Lizzo, what I quickly learned is that she has talent to burn. See, in Australia, at school, like, we learned this thing called the recorder. Do you have recorders in America? Oh, yeah, that's America? where you start. Yeah, so, like, this, I think you right here. Oh, God. Did, did you have to play that? I'll okay. show you hot cross buttons. Yeah, this is what you start on. Everyone starts yeah. on the recorder. Yeah. And then you and then you grow the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> That's hot cross buttons. That is the most graceful recorder. <laughs> <laughs> is that the Titanic? Yeah. Is that that one? Yeah, no. Now you're showing off. Thank Can you I have so this? much. Yeah, for sure. Do you Thank want two? You. Somebody could play, I know people- Lizzo really is full of surprises. So when she invited me back to her dressing room later in the evening, I had no idea what was in store. With a fever pitch crowd waiting to see Lizzo in concert in Sydney, I was surprised a few minutes before showtime when her manager told me she urgently wanted me to visit her dressing room. Shall I knock? Turns out she's a perfectionist and wasn't happy with her first rendition on the recorder for us a little earlier. Okay, I figured it out. Okay. All right, I learned how to do up an octave. All right. Yay! 
you are a musician's musician. Thank you. <laughs> that was fun. I could not You're learn a it. You nailed it. I All love right. it. Thank see you, Lizzo. Later. We'll see you up there. But there was an even bigger surprise to come when Lizzo hit the stage a little later that night. So, Sydney, <clears throat> last time I was here, one of my dreams came true. Y'all helped my dream of playing the Sydney Opera House. So I thought it was only fitting because one of you guys kindly gave me this instrument to make my second dream come true, playing a recorder <laughs> in the Sydney Arena. Thank you to the Aussies for giving me this. <laughs> if ever you needed proof that Lizzo is a genuine musical talent, then this is it. A short time like after being happened. handed an instrument she hasn't played for two decades, she brings the house down in a packed out stadium. It's often a throwaway line to say an artist loves Australia, but Lizzo has gone above and beyond to show that she really cares. Her first tour here was just after the devastating summer of bushfires three and a half years ago, when so affected by what she saw on the news, she volunteered to pack food hampers for victims of the disasters. I feel like you got a bit of a soft spot yeah. for Australia. I do. I think it's because the first time we came to Australia in January 2020, there was, you know, a national crisis happening. And I think that, like, because of that, I had, like, a lot of empathy. I don't know how to say It's like a trauma bond or something that we have <laughs> with each other. And it's like, you know, if you ever need me, I'm here. And I think now that I'm back, it feels really good. I know a lot about Australia. I know more about Australia than I know about any other place. What's, what's I... the weirdest thing you've learned so far about Australia? <sighs> hmm. What is the weirdest thing I've learned about Australia? The toilets go the opposite way here. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh like gets eating. you every time. For many singers, their music is their legacy. But you can't help thinking that for Lizzo, she wants her legacy to be something much bigger. Yeah, I mean, I've changed my life, and I changed my life with this philosophy. I just want everything I do to be useful and purposeful in the world, you know? So I think that that's a good legacy to have. Like, oh, you know, I I helped. <laughs> your laugh, your smile, like, I think people can feel it coming from you. Well, that makes me happy, you know? I only want good stuff coming out, even if it's bad stuff coming in. You know what I mean? You're drawn back to the recorder. I know. <laughs> I was waiting, I was like, when is this gonna be over so I can play more recorder? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. No, no, <laughs> that's it. We'll let you really? play the recorder, you're free. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Fuck, sorry. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thank you for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes, which are on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.